Faculty of Medic. You learn physiology as well, but that's human physiology. If you go to the vet school or to the um, animal science, you'll be learning about the physiology of those animals. And that's even harder, actually. Um, so with, with physiology, you are actually trying to understand what's going on with the plants. You see, plants are living organisms, just like human. So they do interact with whatever situations they are facing or conditions given to them. Right. So in a normal condition, when you are not playing experiments with your plants, the plants are still interacting with the surrounding environments. And we know that there are many processes in plants that is contributing to the plant's health, plant's response. For example, you learn about um, growth analysis, right? That is actually the consequence of various things that is happening as the time is progressing. For example, at the beginning of the seedlings, what is most important for the seedlings? Is it important for the seedling to have flower? So what's important? What kind of organs that the seedling needs to build more? Root. Shoot? Shoot the root? Shoot root. Stem. Right. So th this is equivalent to your, your body. When, when, when you are um, a baby, a baby do not need um, to look beautiful. No need to make makeup. I just need to make my, my bones stronger. I need to grow rapidly so that when I, when I just born, I'm just lying around. Hopefully, I can start crawling, walking, running, and so on. You see, this development of the organs in the body of an organism, be it human or plants, it is coincide with the life phase of, 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 of that organism. Okay? So with plants, with the advances of technology, with the advent of new technology, we get to quantify these events that are not obvious to your naked eye, meaning that these events, growth and developmental events, happening inside the body. Like, for example now, do you have blood? Yes. Is your blood moving or circulating? Yes. How do you know? Yes. Can you see your blood circulating? Yes. You, know, you look at your friends and oh, that's backward. Correct, correct. So, in a hospital, doctors use equipment to understand this blood circulation, to understand your hormones. You know, you got hormones, right? How all of these are functioning and whether they are in the right order or otherwise. So, with plants, we can do that as well. So, over here, you got so many equipments here. Mm, what are these? Have you seen these before? Why not? I feel you, you didn't go to the museum. <laughs> some, some, some of these equipment have been around for quite some time, and uh, we we do have the old version of it. They they have not been um, upgraded. Okay. Um, here's here's what's going to happen. So I'm going to talk about these equipment then you need to make association in your head. This equipment, is it um, measuring the process in the plants? There are many processes in plants. Or is it measuring the growth conditions surrounding the plants? Because you cannot run away when, when you're talking about growth and development. It's talking about the processes that leading to the growth and development and also the environmental cues 
or signals that is causing this growth and development to occur. Okay? If you, as a human, you, you just, the moment you were born, you are kept in the room, never see sunlight, never, never see friends. You just in your big villa house. You can grow until the age of 20, whatever. But plants, they, they need these interactions more in, in a form of higher degree than, than, than humans. Okay? You don't need to see sun, but um, you will be very, very unhappy and unhealthy. It's true, you can get uh, vitamin D uh, from supplementation, but that's not optimum, is it? So with plants, there, there is no alternative or substitution for that. Plants need light to live. Even if one day not receiving light is enough to kill a seedling. Okay, that's, that's how vital it is. Because remember, plants are autotrophic organism and humans are heterotrophic organism, meaning that the plants are making their own food. Okay, so with this equipment, some of this measuring what's happening in the plants, some are actually measuring these environmental factors influencing the plants. Okay, so there are many factors influencing the plants surrounding it. We call this biotic factors, okay, or sometime in the book or Wikipedia, they like to call it a biotic stress. Well, it's not really a stress when it is in the right dosage, time, location, and so on, when something is in excessive or under given, then it's become a problem, okay, um, right, so I'm going to start with, what should I start with? Which one do you want? This one? This one? This one? I need to turn on this one actually. One moment. Oops. You see that around? So we, we need to thank um, a, a company, Elite, actually, because they are sponsoring this, uh, this equipment. Okay. So let's look at this um, equipment over here. Um, okay. <coughs> What's this? What? CO2? CO2? <coughs> um, you know what? I'm thinking I'm, I'm going to save this a bit later. Let's uh, review equipment that measure what's happening surrounding the plants. So what are importance for plants to grow? Light, okay. What, what else? Water, that's correct. What else? Love? No. You do make that, okay. Carbon dioxide, that's true. What else? Oxygen, yes, true. What else? What? Let's have a note. Nutrient. Nutrient. Okay. Do you need nutrients? What kind of nutrient do you need? Carbohydrate. Protein. Do you need carbohydrate or do you need food? Which one do you need actually? Do you need carbohydrate or do you need food? Just want to see who says we need carbohydrate? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, who says we need food? Okay, okay. Just just to trigger the way you are thinking. If you say that we are we need food, but then it is presented in front of you. A pieces of cardboard. Here's your, here's the food. Ah, makana. Eat. Sit for now. Makan, makan Food, right? You said you wanted food. That's food. Is it your food or is it not your food? 
So, cardboard, paper, and stuff. Whose food is it? Worms. Are you worms? Uh, so actually, we need the nutrients for the food, and food is just a generic term. As long as uh, you are a living organism and you are not some kind of alien or unhappy spirits, you need physical food. Okay? Worms need food, you need food. However, the nutrients that you need are different. Okay? So when you're saying that, oh, I need carbohydrate and protein and fat to live, that is correct. Food is also correct, but you're a science student. You need to think a step higher than that. Okay? So if I ask you, do you need water or do you need drinks? Sure. Sure. Do you need water or do you need drinks? <laughs> Ini namanya, I'm not going to get it again. <laughs> okay, so let's start from here. Um, what? I think you should come here. Okay, so the equipment that I have here, oops, oops, that, that, that might cause an issue. Is it? I hope it's not causing an issue. Being too close. Okay. Don't worry, okay? You can come later here to take picture, to play around with it. It's okay. You can do that in a bit later. So this equipment um, is from a company called Lyco. Lyco is, is not a Malaysian company. It's a US-based company, but it's got multiple headquarters. Um, we use a lot of products from this company, okay? For physiology, at least, right? So this, the piece that I'm holding here, it's called CO2, H2O, gas analyzer. Why this is important? So you, so you see the, 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 the um, inlet here. So this inlet here is actually equipped with an internal pump. So this pump is going to suck in all the air inside this surrounding. And then you're going to get two reading. The, the volume of water, the volume of water, as well as the amount of CO2, the CO2 concentration. Is there anywhere, any way I can, or maybe I should just use that, that microphone. I think I can use that. I don't like this because it prevents my hand to go this way. All right. Okay. All right. Happy? Happy? Nobody screaming or shrieking? Right. Right. Okay. Coming back to this, this little box here. So this is a CO2 H2O analyzer. You see the word. It says gas. See? Don't don't point at me. Point at the machine. I, I'm not I'm not the celebrity now. <laughs> right. So it says here it is a gas analyzer. Therefore, it's measuring gas. Never ever you put this into the pond, and hoping to know what is the water volume in my pond. The answer is more mm, one thousand. More a lot a lot a lot. Okay. So, anything, I think, no, you, did, you don't need to zoom. Just come closer to, to show what's on the screen. Yeah. Cameraman, that's a degree. Okay. So, with this, with this equipment, um, you can actually connect it to, to a software. You need to um, download the software. And it's going to tell you the value of um, CO2. So the top one is the amount of current CO2 now, which is high because of you. What's the reading? About 700 ppm. What's the current atmospheric CO2 concentration? Are you living on Earth? 
So what? So what's the value? What? Who knows? It's four hundred. Okay. Maybe in school time you learn it as in the form of percentage, zero point zero zero four percent. That actually can be turned into ppm. So the unit that is ppm, right? And down there is water, and this water is actually, you see, there are many ways to, to show water measurement. And one way is to tell the amount of water in this gaseous situation, millimole per mole, meaning that this machine quantifies per mole of air how much of water molecules are present. Look at the unit. It says millimole, meaning that the machine is counting water molecules. Okay? It's not just simply measuring the volume. It's actually counting the water molecule. How does it do it? If you open this machine, there is a set of laser, the infrared laser. So it's going to shoot the laser to this air that it has sucked in. Then this laser, at the end of it, there is a sensor. So the shooter know the, knows the amount of that it just shot. And then at the end, if, if there is some amount of energy missing, the, the machine can calculate it and turn it into value. That's the amount of water molecules that have been sucked. Okay, right. Um, let's see what happens when I blow to it. What's going to happen to the CO2 when I blow it? Well, as we can, can see. Yeah, the pengantin has arrived. It's always my class that I come late. Why? Huh? Hmm. Okay, let's see. Ooh. You see? It's increasing. So our, our human breath is actually about five to 7,000 ppm. That's very high. But you don't get it the reading that high because of our atmosphere is so large. So the dilution effects takes uh, effect almost immediately. Okay. Right. What about my water? Did it increase or decrease just now? Mm -hmm. Why? Why? Why is it increased? The water this auto we can understand why the water increases as well. Water vapor, water vapor. So why this is important for plants? You see, plants need CO2 as one of the ingredients to do photosynthesis, okay? But what about water vapor? This water vapor is not absorbed into the plant. So this water that you see down there, it has impact on relative humidity, RH, meaning that the percentage of moisture that is possible to be present in the current atmospheric condition. Our age is not going to be the same, even though your water volume is similar between two places. If in here, you got about what, 15, 16 millimole of water, let's say that the RH now is 70. The same volume of water, you put it in different location, let's say Cameron Highland, the RH is not going to be the same, okay? Because the capacity of the atmosphere to hold the water is different now, right? So this is important to the plant. Why? Why water vapor surrounding the plant is important? Have you learned or not? Why? Why is it important? Why? Okay. Uh, how, how come? The humidity is high in transpiration. If uh, if the transpiration rate is high, the, the is high if the humidity is high, is why? Because <laughs> almost there, getting there, getting there. You 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 see um, you can move around now. My students are very sensitive with me these days. Sebab aku selalu marah dia orang. Kan? Sebab suruh buat benda merepek. Alah. Cuma kau buat benda merepek kau balik rumah. Kau balik rumah, you do a stack party. 
And then you invite all your cousin. See what your parents say. Apa? Dia biarkan je. Okay. Um, humidity, the water vapor surrounding the plants actually will have impact on the stomatal closing and opening. Okay. One of the rule or can I say law? Maybe the law. To open stomata is for the plants to be experiencing high relative humidity. At least 50%. Anything lower than that, let's say that 30%, the stomata are going to close. You see, stomata are made up of specialized cells that we call guard cell pair. Two guard cells make a one stoma. Plural is stomata. When relative humidity is low, these stomata assume this is drought. This is dry condition close the stomata to conserve water in the plant body. That's why humidity needs to increase. Okay, but not too much. What happens if the humidity is too high now? Let's say 90%. You grow your plants in 90% humidity. Are the plants going to be happy? Why not? Why not? Why? Why? Why plants are not happy in high humidity? Why? Suddenly, I can feel this row skip three beats of heart <laughs> just because I'm walking through here. Why? Uh, why? Uh, it's not so much about breathing. Like us human, if we grow in, eh, not grow, if we live in 90% humidity, we cannot breathe. It's just so hard to breathe. But for plants, 90% humidity will cause fungus to appear easily on the surface of the plants. And this fungus going to have a party and then create havoc on the plant surface, growing on the leaf and so on to the point the, the the leaf cannot function well and if it gets even more worse this fungus is going to be parasitic to the plants okay so that's why if you grow your plants hydroponically in a greenhouse and so on we need to control this rh okay all right okay so enough with that so let's see the second equipment what is that so we deal with the atmospheric condition Let's see, um, I think we can go with this one. Yeah. Or this. So these two, we have EC and pH meter. What is EC? Elect ele electron. E electron. Oops. EC stands for electrical conductivity. Okay. Um, what is it used for? I need to, to recall that. Um, Haris, mana, mana air apa? This one. Yeah. And this? I better. Okay. Right. So EC is the measure of um, electrical conductivity, meaning that in a solution, Ions are present, and ions have charges, positive, negative, and so on. These differences in charges creating action potential. Okay, so meaning that when there is a difference in potential, equilibrium needs to set in place. In order to, to, to have this equilibrium going on, it will create the this movement of electron from, from one place to another place. You see, it's moving, right? When it's moving, trying to achieve equilibrium or trying to find its positive pair, this can be measured. Okay? So think of it this way. The more ions that you have, it doesn't matter it comes from what element. It can come from um, Cl minus, chlorine, fluorine, magnesium, calcium, and so on. So the more ions that you have, the more busy the solution that you have in hand. 
Okay, and this busy solution in terms of electrical potential activities, you can measure using this equipment here. Okay, so let's see. Um, so, by the way, let's see. Uh, can you zoom to that? I want to see to show the. Oh, it, yeah. So electrical conductors got the unit. Okay, Siemens. S I E M E N S Siemens. So micro Siemens or Desi Siemens. Okay. And, um, is there any alternative uh, for um, unit for that? Mm, I think there is. Maybe you, you have not seen this before. Do you know Ohm? You know Ohm, right? So Siemens is the reciprocal for Ohm. So it become, you know, sometimes uh, scientists are lazy. They don't want to think of a new word. They just turn it this way. So for EC, you have Siemens as the unit. So usually it's in the Desi Siemens per meter or um, Milli Siemens per meter. So this um, Desi Siemens per meter can be uh, the reciprocal, reciprocal for ohm. You know ohm? That thing. So sometimes some things are just lazy, just like you. So they don't want to think of a new name. They just um, reciprocal this word, M-H-O. So milli mo is equivalent to Desi Sevens per meter. Okay, so don't be surprised if you read what is more, more. I, I never learned that. That's just the, the reverse of the word ohm. Okay, right. <clears throat> so let's test two water here. So I've got the. Not that one. Oh, the pocket. <laughs> I put it here. This is a water. You need to hold the mic. No, okay, before we test the EC, whose EC do you think is going to be lower or higher? The um this EC here. This is um distal water. Do you think it's going to be higher or lower than the pond water? Lower. lower. Why? Because he has got no charge. So, he's in charge. Not in charge. Okay, let's see. So, um, this is water, pond water. Why not? It's not. Okay. So, so, let's see the EC for this um pond water and the unit is what unit is that you need you need to clear the pond don't nampak sini the pond bagi dia orang nampak clear yep over it over it yep macam susah hanya guna benda ni jual lah okay what's it easy 0. 0.02 okay right Oh, I need a tissue for this. I've got no tissue. Do I have tissue? Tissue! Somebody please uh, memorize, okay? Let's test for the pond water. Hmm. Doa kalau dia ya hamakallah. Okay, what's the easy right? Zero point one one. Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. So zero point zero two to zero point one one. How how many percent percent in, uh, more? Percent percent percent. Percent percent percent. Distilled water. Pond water. 
So don't be deceived by the transparency of water. Okay, there's a lot going on in here. However, one thing about EC, it doesn't tell you, um, can you pull this back, put it on the, yeah, so that your friend can. If you need a chair, there's a chair by, by, by the wall. Yeah. Okay. So, however, EC doesn't tell you one thing. It doesn't tell you the high or low readings is due to what? Ions. It doesn't tell you. That actually you need to do further testing or send to the lab. For example, um, let's say that these two, the EC is high, you know, one, one uh, millisiemens. But we do not know. This one millisiemens is due to the dissolved nitrate or to the dissolved phosphate, for example. We do not know. It just tells you the overall story of electrical potential activities. That's all. And therefore, it is a good measure or quick measure to know whether your plant is actually experiencing, oh, this plant is receiving less nutrient concentration. It's time to increase nutrient concentration. For example, when you are dealing with hydroponic solution. Okay. Okay. Another one. What impact will it have when you have a plant growing in hydroponic solution and then the EC is very low? For example, let's say that the EC for this plant is optimum at 2.0 uh, siemens, millisiemens. If it goes lower, what will happen to the plant? Happy? Unhappy? Why unhappy? It's unhappy lah because nutrient insufficiency. Okay, fine. Then we increase to five uh, uh, Siemens value. Then what will happen to the plant? Will happy or unhappy? Why unhappy now? Lots of food. Yeah. You want one burger samurai, your friend got five. Now eat. Too much, so don't take. Why? Why the why why the the plants are happy with the higher EC value? You're a science student. How 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 do you explain this situation? It is unhappy, it's a statement. What is the mechanism to cause the unhappiness? This is very easy, actually. I'm very sure you learned this um, in your school. Why? Why saturated? Okay. Then what happened when it becomes saturated? The solution. Yes, solution can be saturated with nutrient. Okay. If it's go beyond the saturation point, you will see the salt deposit at the bottom of the hydroponic tank. It's just too much Sat saturating. It cannot dissolve further. Why? 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 Ever learn osmotic gradient? What will happen when one side of the membrane has higher molarity compared to the, the, the other side? What will happen to the water molecule? Water molecule will go to the high molarity or the reverse? Higher to lower. So the same thing happens to the plant actually. The plant is made out of water, loss of water. And it has its own EC reading in the body. Yes, you too has EC reading in your body, your blood. Your blood got EC reading as well. When, when the plant is experiencing higher EC than its own body, whatever water in the plant will start rushing out to the nutrient solution. When all the water is rushing out and no nutrient coming in and so on, what will happen to the plant? What will happen to the cell of the plant now? What? There's only one word for this. One word. Plasmolysis, yes. Plasmolysis. Plasmolysis. So this is the what we call as the hypertonic solution. Okay? Baca tak? Water potential. 
Ah, uh, pasu sangat. Alright, okay. Second equipment, the pH. Hmm. We can use the same solution. Oops. I'm gonna step on the skirt of this um, table. What is pH? What is pH? Anybody want to tell to the class what is pH? What? Hydrogen. Hi uh, what about hydrogen? So pH, that P actually stands for potential. Potential. How much hydrogen ions are present in the system? Okay, so meaning that you can measure hydrogen both in solution and also in soil. Okay, so this hydrogen will cause the soil or nutrient solution to be acidic. Okay, what if the soil or solution becomes more alkaline or more basic? What happened to the hydrogen? Is it lo a lot or less? So what is more if, if hydrogen is less? Hydro? Hydroside, OH. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Right, okay. So why, why this is important to the plant? Um, I think we, we, we measure first. Let's see. You see this one? Before I plunge the probe into this, want to guess what's the pH of this? You know, a good agronomist, they can actually have a very sharp guess about the pH of the soil. Want to guess? What? What do you think the pH is going to look like? Seven? Four? 6.5? That's very safe. 5.5, okay, 6.5, 5.5, let's see. <clears throat> um, we, you need to be very careful with this probe, okay? So this probe, um, you can plunge directly into the soil, but you need to loosen the soil for a bit using this, what's this? Pen. I've, I've been asking some people actually, apa nama benda ni? Let's call it a poker. Because we, we, we poke it, right? Okay. Um, I forgot to mention earlier, both EC and pH, before you use, at least regularly, you need to do the calibration. I've done the calibration yesterday. So you see there is a buffer solution here. So this buffer solution, meaning that the, the, the pH of it is known. It was created by the factory. They know the amount of hydrogen that is present in each of these solution. So when we dip the, um, the measuring probe, we can calibrate that machine. Okay, now you are in the solution of four. I know that you are reading 3.9, correct that to 4.0. So that's why calibration is important, okay? So that has been done. Let's see, let's open this. I need to be very careful with this. We need a container before we spill the... So this probe is actually in a solution. If you can look closer. Potassium chloride solution. Never store probe in distilled water. Okay. Um, you need, because it's a sensitive uh, piece of equipment. Okay, open that. Put it here. Oops. Okay, moment of truth, moment of truth, moment of truth. Was it ready? Was it ready? <laughs> you, you need to wait for a bit. Until it's, uh, it has uh, stable. Okay. All 
Alright, okay, I think it's about 6.5. Yeah. No? Want to wait? Okay, let's wait. Let's see how 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 far how far it go. Because I heard somebody uh, said seven earlier, right? I want to guess seven. <laughs> yep. Six point. Six point seven. Anybody want? No? No. No? Okay, let's let's take it six point seven. All right. Is that an optimum pH or not? Yes. Why? What is the optimum pH? 6.5.7. 6, 6 Where did you learn that? So it's for analysis. <coughs> In general, there is an optimum value for both hydroponic solution pH and soil pH. It's a bit different. It's not the same. Okay. But we generally accepted for for the health of the plant we keep the ph between 5 to 6.5 this is the range it has to be mildly acidic why why it has to be mildly acidic there is um pH nutrient availability scale. I don't have it here. When it's too acidic, macronutrients, macro elements are not going to be available for the plants. Macro elements are things like N, PK, calcium, sulfur, magnesium. They, they are present in the soil or in the solution, but plants cannot take this up and use for themselves. Okay, it's just not going to happen because it's just too acidic. When it's becoming too basic or alkaline, you know, pH 8, 9, and so on, the trace elements are going to be not available, less available. Trace elements are things like what? Zinc, boron, molybdenum, and so on. Unso suri, things that, that plants require in small amount. All right? So as long as you understand the concept, I think for now it's good. So two acid macronutrients unavailable. Two basic, two alkaline micronutrients unavailable. Okay? All right, as simple as that. <coughs> you want to see the, the pH for this? Oh, I need to have a water for this. Always clean your probe, okay? Clean your probe. Okay, let's play another guess game. What's the what's the pH for the um this water? Wanna guess? What's the pH? Seven. Let's see. Is it really seven? <laughs> oh, it's not seven. That's 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 even more acidic. Can I pawn? Okay. About five point six, five point seven. Let's see the pond water. I think this is pond because it, it looks yellower. Hmm, interesting. The pond water actually, oops. The pond water actually, um, more alkaline. Hmm. Why is that? Why? Why do you think it is? 
7.2. 7.2, 7.3 is actually the pH of your blood. Why do you think that that's the case? Oops. Okay. Right. Let's do it in here. Touch your tongue, right? Yeah. Uh huh. All right. Okay. Hmm. So we have dealt with gas, soil, water. What else? What else is there? What? What other factors can we measure that actually surrounding and influencing the plant growth and development? Light. light. Yeah, light. Light. Temperature. Temperature. You know. Just put on, under your in your ear. Uh, 37. Got it. Um, can we bring it over here? This thing. Bring it over here. Light go with light. Okay, so I've got a piece of it. Here. Yeah, I'm not on it. Oh, the button. Ooh. Wake up, wake up. Nobody's on own. In my class, we just learned about the mystery of light. Why light is a mystery? While well, waiting for that thing to warm up for a bit. Why light is a mystery? Huh? <laughs> Why light is a mystery? What? A dual nature. What is that nature? Do, do you want to tell it to the class? Nah. Yeah. Go. Why light is a mystery and explain what is that mystery. And that mystery is in my book. He's, he's literally, literally taking out the notebook. Uh, like it's uh, mystery because it has no nature with which this particle uh, photon that has density and also with the energy. Good. Uh, yay. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's, it's very interesting to learn about light. Okay? Light is a mystery. It, it is. It, it, you can see it. You can feel it, the warmth. It can go through. It can be reflected. It can be refracted. It can be transmitted. It can come in various color. But it doesn't have any mass. That alone is a mystery. Right. Light originating like 200 million miles away is the one energizing our planet. <coughs> right. So, plants actually know, I do not know exactly what's the story, but plants utilize this mystery of light. The, the, the dual nature of light, which is light at, at the same time, it is a particle, and at the same time, it is a wave. Two things happening at once. Okay, When light is behaving like a particle, we call it a photon meaning that you can actually count the number of light particles, zarah cahaya. Okay? When light is behaving like a wave, meaning that it has got the wavelength, the lambda that you learn in physics. And this actually, you cannot count it, but you can see by your own eyes what color the light is in now. So this color that you are seeing, all this rainbow color, green, yellow, what so on, corresponding to a specific wavelength nanometers. Okay, so these things go in together, energizing the plants like this. So plants kind of utilizing the right kind of color to use and also the right amount of light to use in order to, to you know, to run the photosynthesis. Okay, so this thing is on now. Um, I'm going to open this. 
You see this thing? It's got a sensor on it. So this sensor, we can... Let's see, let's try this. Like, what color is this? Is it really white? Mm. Yellow? Okay, quick quiz. Who says the, the dominant light in this white light is yellow? I, want to, I just want to say, just a quick hunch before we measure using this machine. This machine will tell you. Okay, red? No? Blue? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, green? I play one another. Uh, uh, violet. One. One. I play color that I have not said. Yellow. Hey, come on, ah. What, what do you think is the dominant light in this light? Or who says all light colors are equal? Some of your ratio there. One to one, one to one, 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 one. No, no. So what's the dominant color? Blue. Okay. All right. Let's see. Well, is it really blue? So I'm going to press this. Is that measure? <coughs> no. Oh, magic got the penny. Yeah. So it hasn't got. Go back to the home. Okay. 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 So there's a button over here to capture. So I'm going to place it right close to that. And press it. That one you? No, but that one. One more time. Oh, I'm going to press it. Uh, to dear Machan about magic, you you are sawing your friends, guys. Eh, putus. It's not causing any sound. Hmm. Oh, the keluar patut lah. Sim card, sim card pula. SD card the keluar. Tidak. Huh? They can also this this form and then the form. Oh, I already pressed it, Daddy. Okay. Ah. Uh, eh, eh, SIM card keluar lagi. Bahaya lah benda ni. So, so like kau buat pintu untuk SIM card ni. Oh, God. <laughs> Can save a file. <laughs> keluar. Okay. What color? Who say blue? Blue. blue. Who says red? <laughs> I, I, I'm asking. Who, who, who says the dominant light is red? Okay. Hijau. Okay. Anybody say green? I just want to see. Who, who says green? No. Nobody say green. No. No. Okay. So the truth is. Can you see that? Why? 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 Oh, but any. Oh. Mm. How to make it a bit less? Ah, Jenny. Oops. Wait, 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 wait. Uh huh. Like right, color. <laughs> Telefon aku tak bagi kerja sama. 
Yo, this thing. Uh huh? Uh huh? Can you see that color? <laughs> Dia tak nak pergi kerja, kerja sama lah. Ish. Kenapa dia gaya sangat di telefon ni? I need to stop rot rotating that. Nampak? Ah. What color is that? Green. So, who win? Aku dah menang. <laughs> Alright. Okay. However, that is only one properties of light, which is the color. And green. Lupa. Bagus ada pocket ada baju ni. Eh, aku cakap tak betul. Bagus ada pocket ada baju. Bagus pocket ada baju. Okay. So, it's good. It's good to 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 know what wavelength is that. So, green color according to this spectral distribution, it's around 550 nanometer. So the light that is above you right now, the, the most wavelength that it, it is emitting from the LED, 550 nanometer. Okay, that's not the only story about it. What about the amount of light, the intensity of light? So for that, we go to here, let's see. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. Go back, go back. It shows. Kenapa dia tak nak ni? Yep. Okay. Let's see on the screen now. So, you can see that PPFD, that stands for photosynthetically. Apa? What is PPFD? Apa? PPFD is the um, photons or light energy between the, the wavelength of 400 to 700 nanometer. These are the energy used by the plant to do photosynthesis. Plants do not need anything out of this range. Okay, and the amount is 2.3 micromole per square meter per second. Okay, and what about blue? And blue is about 400 to 500 nanometer. That's only 0 0.61 micromole. And for the green, that's a lot here, which is one. Okay, one micromole. And then red, which is 0 0.6. So you can see here, the blue and red is actually of the same value. Is it true? We, you can validate by looking at the spectral color just now. The peak of the blue and red is similar. Alright? So that's why we know it's, it's the same. Alright. Okay. So why this is important? Well, plants need um, at least for the tropical plant. What do you think the, the micro micromole light outside now? In tropical, we are tropical, right? What's the micromole outside now? I think it can simply uh, approaching uh, 2000. So, 2000 micromole is super, super bright. Okay. But of course, in here, it's not so much because we are using the artificial light and so on. Okay. So, that's about light. Yeah. And come the. This. Oh, this equipment is also measuring light. But you do not have the fancy spectral distribution and stuff. It only tells you directly the PPFD, what is the value. Meaning that what is the intensity of light between 400 to 700 nanometer. That's it. It's not measuring UV. It's not measuring infrared just what is important for photosynthesis. So now the reading is, so it's got the sensor here, 0 0.1. Hmm. What if I increase the light here? Let's see. Let's see my, if this phone got the photosynthetic light or not. If, it, if it's got no photosynthetic light, it cannot be detected by the sensor. Magnetosh light. Okay. 
Ooh. Oh, okay. Good morning. So it's about two hundred um micromole. Okay. Yep. So at least I know if sun is not around, I can use my phone to grow tauge. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's, so that's enough about light. Okay. So you have learned about many uh, equipments to measure surrounding of the plants, the soil, the water, the, um, the, the gas, and also the light. Now here comes the equipment. After you have played around with all these abiotic factors, water, gas, and light, what happens to the plant in terms of photosynthesis? Have you learned photosynthesis? Have you? No? Yes? Okay, so this machine here, we've got two generations. So this is the old generation, LI6400, since about, I don't know, 25 years ago. And we have the new generation here, LI6800. Of course, new generation, touch screen and so on, because you like to touch, to touch glasses so much, right? So they turn it into touch screen. Okay, so the how the machine works so let's let's have a demo um the concept of the machine is easy it will clamp i need i need i need, I need to have a demo can you um, can you see the Okay, um, I put that data tripod. I put it at the top. No, it's okay. It's okay. Okay, I'm just going to explain how, how does this work. Okay, nobody wants to know the old stuff, right? Let's go to the new stuff, right? Or do you want to know the story about the tukun? Saya sebatang pensil is about to become that way now. So this a day, then some music at the back. Oh, nangis nangis. We we go we go to the good stuff straight, okay? Because um this is going to be obsolete very soon, and our 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 faculty going to uh we we going to be using this from now on, right? Okay. So this machine has three three important parts: the console, okay the connecting cables and this is not just electrical cables okay this is also gas cable signal cable and gas cable and then the measuring chamber this thing here bukan snapang okay so the console is the computer for the machine this is where you control what to measure what to to record and so on and how do you want the plants to experience, okay? And this console is equipped with, can you see all these columns here? Yeah, so these columns are actually the ingredients for photosynthesis. Yeah, so in here we have the CO2 column, we have the desiccant column to remove um, humidity or water, we have the humidifier column to add water, and also we have the soda lime column, which is to scrub CO2, to remove CO2 from the system, right? Okay, so with this machine, we can set how the plant is experiencing inside the measuring chamber. You see here? There's a chamber here, you can open it. So, you will need to clamp your leaf that you want to measure inside this chamber and then this chamber you close it okay pretty much like this right and then when the leaf is being clamped inside this is a separate world now and this world you can control what the plant is experiencing 
do you want the plant to experience as the way it is now or do you want the plant to experience some kind of hypothetical situation maybe like hmm let's make the plant to experience 2050 co2 maybe 2050 co2 the co2 is going to be at 100 ppm who knows right you do you don't have the time machine but you have this machine right so we make the plant experience the future co2 concentration but by clamping it inside in here so let's see what can be played around inside this measuring chamber besides co2 so we can control the flow the flow is basically the um the wind speed inside okay the flow <coughs> how how fast the gas move throughout this system okay and then you can control the water remember the story about humidity yeah some people they want to study how humidity affect stomatal opening and closing so you can play around with this humidity you can control it to be higher to be lower and so on then you can control the amount of co2 going in and out as well yeah maybe you want to understand co2 in the future which is we know to be very high around 700 or 800 or so or maybe you just want to suppress photorespiration you know it's three three plant one problem with C3 plant is photorespiration. It's a wasteful metabolic process. And you want to study how good is this plant in if the photorespiration is suppressed. To suppress photorespiration, simply bring down the value of CO2 to around 100 ppm. Then the photorespiration will be suppressed. Okay? And you can also control the fan. The fan is basically the stirring of air inside this chamber if there is no air the gas outside cannot get into the leaf because the leaf is protected by an invisible barrier you see this leaf here see, see, see. you see this leaf here your hand your hair semualah muka kau semua all surfaces on this planet right above it there is an invisible layer we call it boundary layer you cannot see it but it's there so this thin film of boundary layer the air in this layer is not moving it's static okay kind of like vacuum so if this boundary layer surrounding this leaf is not broken it's not disturbed Wherever CO2 and oxygen in here cannot get into the leaf through the stomata. Okay, so this is why wind is important in nature. Wind, what happens when, come, when wind comes this way? I am a plant and I, what I'm doing here. Why? What the, what the wind does? Shake, shake. Shake, shake. What do? Joget. What the wind does? So, the, the, the movement of, of the plants due to the presence of the wind actually causing the boundary layer to break. Okay? A split second of breaking is enough because the boundary layer will, will reattach back very quickly. But the split seconds of it opens up, that is enough to allow all the gaseous to get in and also to go out. All right? So that's why we can control the fan in here. Ah, see Okay, then we can control temperature. Maybe you want to see how your, your plant's doing in the drought situation. Drought is very hot, right? Yeah, so you want to see. Uh, can, can my plant variety, I just created this variety, can it withstand 45 degrees Celsius? Yes. You can play around this machine, right? Yeah. And then the light. And of course, the light, we... Um, 1500. Yeah. You can set the amount of light, the intensity of light, which is we set here, 1500. And also, you can set the ratio of the light color, like in here. We set the ratio at the moment, 90% red and 10% blue, okay? 
blue is needed to open stomata. Without blue light, stomata pretty much kind of um, static. Okay, we keep this. Let's measure the plant. So, um, let's see. Uh, program, measurement. Oh, can I screen it up? So, this is the screen without the plants clamped into it. So, you've got two axes here. The A axis, the purple axis on the left, is the reading of assimilation. So, this machine specifically measuring carbon assimilation. Do you know Kelvin cycle? How many phases in Kelvin cycle? What are they? Fixation, then? Uh, uh, reduction after that regeneration so this machine specifically measure carbon assimilation in the fixation phase of kelvin cycle as simple as that that is the place it measures photosynthesis okay so it can't, it gives you the reading of a so here assimilation here how much co2 per second per meter, square meter okay and then the yeah no that's this that's not yellow the green part on the right is the reading of conductance whether the stomata are opening or not conductance is the passage of gas in and out of the stomata okay so let's clamp the leaf now it's got no tripod so let's see how can i do this Okay, so I just clamp the leaf now. So let's see what happens to the leaf. So we're going to zoom in the um, the graph. So this is the assimilation, okay? A is assimilation, and that is our measure of photosynthesis. Let's see whether this leaf is photosynthesizing or not. If it's photosynthesizing, the A value that you see on the screen is going to be positive. If it's not photosynthesizing, meaning that it's doing a lot of cellular respiration, you're going to see that as negative. Negative. Yeah. Negative means that the leaf is giving lots of CO2 into the system. Positive means the, the leaf is taking in lots of CO2 into its body. So we wait for a bit. It's still negative. So when when this happens, does does it mean the uh, photosynthesis is not happening? What does it mean? <clears throat> you know what? This maybe you want you might want to know about this. Maybe this is going to be useful for you later when you do use this machine. Leaf selection is very important when you do photos photosynthesis. Okay. You shouldn't be using older leaf like where, what we are using now. This is old leaf. It's a lot lower, right? So to get a good photosynthesis reading, choose the top three to five leaf. From the top fully expanded meaning that the leaf has stopped expansion okay so maybe we can change it to here and we need some water in here two minutes two minutes Because yeah, my cameraman turning into octopus squid now. Tangan suak ke sini, tangan ke sini. Okay. Let's use spawn water to siram dia. If you if you don't water your plants, the plants thinking it's lacking water. When you think it's lacking water, it's going to close stomata. When it's closing to stomata, 
how on earth the photosynthesis is going to happen. Okay, let's do the counting together. I say, what leaf number you should be using? Three to five fully expanded. Okay, this here, can I use this? Yes, this, this, this. This. Can I use this? Why not? Don't say too small. It is it is expanding. Still expanding. You are a science student. Use the right word. So can I use this? <laughs> can I use this? Why not? Still expanding. Okay. Can I use this? Okay. How about this one, slightly lower? So which one is safer? So this one, you don't call it a leaf. This is what we call as primordia. This is also kind of primordia kind of leaf. So we don't regard this as a leaf. We still call it primordia. Okay. This you can start calling expanding leaf. So I said from three to five, right? So you start counting. One. Two, three. Actually, starting from this one until number five, you can use. So to be safer, use the youngest, which is this one. Use this one. Okay, climb this one. Carpet. Okay. I think we need to increase this flow. Flow this flow is quite uh quite uh one two seven hundred. Oh, we we. Uh huh. You you need a bit of patience to do this, okay? Are you patient? Yeah. Yeah, good. I'm I don't know. Oh, by the way, but then must exam because I'm the one preparing the final. Habis lah kau. Kau pula tak buat benda nota kan? Nota pula aku tak benda tak bagi. Habis lah. Habis lah. Habis lah. Okay, so let's look at the the assimilation reading now. Is it negative or positive? Positive. Why is it positive? Why the first leaf is negative? The older leaf just now, the first one, it was negative. Why is it? Concentration. Concentration. What about it? Low. Eh, diam. Tak sempat dengan korek cerita. Kau dengar dia? Yes. Low. So, concentration. Aha. So, low. Concentration. So, negative. Assimilation value. Okay. The first leaf, it was negative because the CO2 released by the leaf is more than what it's using. Meaning that the photosynthesis is not active. But cellular respiration due to mitochondria, not chloroplast, mitochondria is the one which is active. That's why it's more negative. Okay. Also a sign, you're talking about the old leaf. It's senescing. It's aging, like you. So that's why it's doing nothing but just finishing off all the foods in the home. Right. Look at your grandma. <laughs> right. Na itu na ini. Bigger je tak? Marah grandma. Okay, don't talk about grandma. We talk about the the very hardworking uncle that go go to work every day, which is this one. It's positive. The estimation is very, very high. Okay? And also, the GSW, which is the conductors to water, is also positive, meaning that the stomata are opening. The stomata open is going to facilitate transpiration. Lots of water vapor is going to go out, right? So the machine can detect this water vapor, and then it gives the reading. What's the unit? 
for the conductor, which is GSW, 0.083 mole of water per square meter per second. Okay, so there's a lot more to be done by this machine. And remember, photosynthesis got two reactions. Uh, that's enough. Photosynthesis got two reactions, the light reaction and the light independent reaction. This just now that you saw is light independent reaction, which is the Kelvin cycle. To quantify for the light reaction, which is the photosystem, the, this machine can do as well, but that's a very uh, complicated topic. Okay that involve what we call as fluorescence study, right? Okay, um, yeah, so I think I need, takpelah, this one actually we have covered here. Final, final um, equipment, what's this? What's this? Straighten my hair. Pull my hair, polish my nails. Yes. Oh, your friend said this is nail polisher. Can I polish my nail? Put in here. Can. Can. Menjerit helmi kalau kau buat macam tu. Ini dia. Okay. This thing is called the chlorophyll meter. Spat meter. Um, very simple. You just clamp it to the... Can somebody um, demo? Kau demo? This machine, it has got a laser in it. So this laser, it will shoot downwards while your leaf is in between. Your leaf is being sandwiched in between two uh, clamps. So at the bottom, there is a sensor. So this sensor will um, quantify how much laser was shot, how much laser was retrieved at the end. And then they turn this into calculation and it will give you a value. This value, no unit, but it just tell you the absolute unit, uh, no, absolute value of chlorophyll. Okay, there's a lot of uh, calculation going on. So you can see that. Let's look um, two leaf here. Okay, so we have two leaf here. We, we get the, the developing leaf, which is this one, the small guy here. And then the hardworking uncle just now. And then the finishing off food stock for six months grandma here. I mean this way, here. Okay, they tak ada gigi kan? So this one. What do you think is going to look like the chlorophyll? Who do you think got the most chlorophyll? Uncle, baby, or lazy ama? Who's going to have the, the highest chlorophyll? I want to see who said the, the, the baby got the highest chlorophyll. One, two, three. No, you 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 need to, you need to, to have some anticipation. That how you can validate your, your understanding. Okay, uh, who says the hardworking uncle? Ooh. Okay, who says the lonely ama? Ada juga. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. Okay, let's see. Right, let's measure the developing baby. What's the chlorophyll like? Somebody please memorize the value, okay? Or I can write on the board. What's the value? 31, 31.3. Okay, what about uncle? Forty-four, forty-four point six. What? What about the hungry ama? Ama. Hi. Hey. All right. So what? What does this tell you? Uncle is always cut. Uncle is always the best. Aku lah tu. Okay. Tadi ramai juga yang raise the hand for the baby to have chlorophyll. Tiba tiba salah. Kenapa? Yes, it's correct. It is still growing. It is developing. So the the chloroplasts are underdeveloped. 
when the chloroplasts are underdeveloped, it cannot do the photosynthesis correctly. I mean, like the structure is there, but it's not functioning. Dia macam kau beli rumah, tapi kau tak dapat sijil CF. So tak masuk lagi. The house is there. Eh, kau orang tak ada rumah lagi kan? Tak apalah. <laughs> oh, dah ada. ada. Tengok kau kau kaya. Kau ada apa? Tak ada. <laughs> okay. What, what about what about the the ama? See the ama. She's very old. She's very old. Old and broken. Look look at the teeth. It's missing teeth now. But still want to munch on popcorn while watching Netflix. Look at the chlorophyll. Forty point two. Okay, this is what, what I want to highlight about this machine. It measures general chlorophyll content. However, however, it doesn't tell you which chlorophyll is high and low. You see in plants, there are a few types of chlorophyll that can be present. Chlorophyll A, B, C, D, all the way until whatever letters E, perhaps. This plant doesn't tell you that 40.2 or 44.6, which chlorophyll is the dominant chlorophyll? Is it chlorophyll A or chlorophyll B? It simple, simply tells you, oh, the chlorophyll is a lot now. Okay, and then that you can make association with the nitrogen content in plant. That's all. For the hardworking and handsome uncle, okay, next satu level lagi. It's not, not only that it is high, but the right kind of chlorophyll for photosynthesis is present, which is validated by this machine earlier. Okay, chlorophyll that is needed for photosynthesis to be super high is chlorophyll A, which belongs to the reaction center. Remember, you learn your photosystem, there is a reaction center called P680. So, this P680 is in fact a special chlorophyll A molecule. The more chlorophyll A molecule P680 that you have, the more active the photosynthesis is going to happen. Okay? But for the AMA, maybe the chlorophyll in abundance is chlorophyll B, which is not really participating, but it's still contributing somehow. Yeah, yeah. Like your ama, it's still in the house, right? It's not doing anything much. But the moment happened, who's the loudest? Uh, like, ama got got a girl coming. Oh, 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 oh. oh. wait, what? Where? Huh. Oh, who's family? It's the loudest. But does she contribute the most to the household? No, it's just it's just the being the loudest. Okay, some of you smiling and laughing, actually the guilty one, right? <laughs> all right, okay, all right, okay. Um, I think that's all for the demonstration up to this point. So, just a quick recap. So, I have introduced to you to various equipment to quantify environmental growth conditions for the plants: the gas, the water, the pH, the light. Okay, and then. After all of this, you have understood what happened to the plant at the physiological level, the photosynthesis of it. So we use this machine. What is the Kelvin cycle speed is like? If you think about it, this is kind of measuring Kelvin cycle speed. The faster it is, the more sugar you're going to get. Okay. And then we use this um, SPAT machine to quantify, oh, the photosynthesis is high now. Is it due to the, to the to pigments? So this machine will validate your hypothesis. Yes, it's true. Uncle is very hardworking because time is running out. Yes, because wedding is like in three months away. Right? And the in-law is very demanding. Okay? All right? All right. Okay. Uh, I think that's all. You can come later uh, to take picture. Any question? Yeah. To measure chloroplast? Uh, <laughs> oh, okay, okay, I got it. All right, so um, this equipment, what is parameter? Hilang lah, only. This thing, oops. Can you clamp on cactus? And why not clamp, you know? 
Tak boleh, rosak mesin nanti. You're going to break the machine. Okay. In plant biochemistry, in plant biochemistry, there is a protocol we call as um, pigments quantification method. Okay. We use this method to quantify the pigments in the plant for the plants that are difficult to use with a spat meter or you want to be certain about the actual chlorophyll or other pigments content in the leaf. Because look at the, the value, it hasn't got any um, unit and it doesn't tell you any uh, detail about the chlorophyll, A, B, C, O, D. Okay, so to be certain about it or to deal with a difficult plant, you need to take the sample of the plant, like in here. You take the leaf here, you need to extract the chlorophyll of pigments out of this using solvents such as ethanol and acetone. So you crush it, you use the pestle and mortar, bang it, grind it, you get your extract, your pigment extract. And this pigment extract, you send it to the lab. Our lab actually got the spectrophotometer. So this spectrophotometer will tell you what is the absorbent, which you can use some equations to calculate for the pigments. Not only that you know the pigments of chlorophyll, all the pigments present in the leaf. There are many colors. Just because it is green, do not be fooled by the green color. Other colors are present in here. You got anthocyanin, which are purple red. You got carotene, which are yellow orange. You got xanthophyll, which is yellow. You got what? What else? Pheophytin, which is mm, gray. Okay? All right? So that's how you use for the uh, cactus and difficult plant. Does it answer your question? Okay. Any question? Ada lagi soalan? Is there more question? All good. All good. I'm a plant scientist. You can ask from earth to heaven. But don't ask why if they took the apple. <laughs> Cannot answer that. Why? Hey, why? <laughs> Any more questions? All good? Okay. Okay. So um, I'll just leave to you now for you to take pictures or to look further. And uh, yeah. Are okay. Okay. So, um, Oh, Looper, this is um, LED. Actually, I wanted to use with that, but since we have used the, the lighting here, so that's fine. Um, so, whose group is it? Group one, is it? Yeah, you, you group upper. Oh, group one, okay. Um, yeah, so these two, uh, these two, these three actually you utilizing different kind of light quality. Okay, which act, act, if I were you, I mean machine too, you can play around with this here. Okay, so you can use the machine um, to play around if you want to play around to look at what's the spectrum in here is the most, what's the intensity in here. This is what color? Maybe you can have a hunch. Mm, what's the dominant color in here? So you can use the machine. All right, okay, all right. Uh, so I leave to you now. Uh, you can spread about and do your thing. All right. Thank you.